Yeah, so, so, so it, when I'm just getting the call started, um, I usually try and understand a couple of things. Uh, you know, like I was saying, that's that's what I was talking about before. Understanding their business, what they do, yeah. where they're currently at, revenue, employees, where are they trying to get to, what's stopping them from getting there, um, and then then I like to get into specifics of what you're actually doing right now for marketing, right? You know, what are you doing for SEO? What's your backlink stuff? What uh, what type of support are you after? That's always a really good question. You know, like, are you looking for done for you, done with you? You know, I show you how to do it, or you actually want to do it yourself? These, these are good things to ask on the, the front end. Um, yeah, and just in general, like, I mean, what prompted you to hop on the call? I mean, like, why are you looking for SEO help right now? Do you right. have to bring qualifying questions at the front end to so get into some of these problems of them initially, or is it just more, sometimes that can cause a few barriers to get them in the door, right? So, have you tested that and which one works better? Or? Do you mean having, like, like, like a type form or something, kind of weeds yeah. some people out? Yeah, having them answer, yeah. like, a bunch of questions first, so you can try and understand the problems before you even went on the call type yeah. thing. Yeah, of course, of course you're gonna, that means the lead's gonna be more qualified when you get on the call with them 100%. But if you're dying for clients and you're not, you don't have an abundance of leads calling you, you gotta realize that when, you know, the more steps you put, the lower your conversion rate goes down. So like, in general, if you're kind of, if you need clients, I would just get them on the line and see what's going on. You know, you can get so much information, you can get so much information just being on a call with someone. Catch the net, cast the net wide. And then in time, when you've got too many clients coming in, yeah. and that needs to start moving that's right. in, in the first initial stage, is obviously just pass it away. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's what I would do if I was struggling for clients. But of course, if I had too much and I was turning people away, just just keep making that keep making that filter tougher and keep raising your prices. Um, and, you know, would, would be the other op- would be the other extreme of that. I know that often we've done that in a few local businesses where some of, some of them are getting too much business in and obviously start to struggle to scale with that as well. And then we've even suggested, you know, well, up the price. Oh, but they'll not pay. It. Well, who cares? Who cares? Someone yeah. will pay it, up the price, and then they up the margin by like 30%, and all of a sudden they're not actually losing any more leads. It's like, oh, great, up the price again. Yeah. I can't believe people are. I can't believe people fight on that. I've heard that too so much. People are like, no, I can't do that. I'm like, yes, you can. Just and up like, it. Guess what? And it starts drying up. Lower your price. You can go either way. You know what I mean? If you're right. into drying up and you're losing too many, then lower your price. You went yeah. too far. And then do the same again next year. And over time, yeah. guess what? You probably increase your prices. And there's also a lot of psychology of people value things that are expensive. So if you come in and your price is a third, they're going to think the value of your service is a third a lot of the time. So you would actually be amazed when you raise your price how sometimes your conversion rate goes up. Um, it, it's, it's pretty absurd. So yeah, just do it. See what happens. It's all about <laughs> testing. Now it's about testing.